Do you want to start generating more power on your ground stroke, especially your forehand? But this can really be used anywhere. This is what the pros are doing, and this is what you should do. And it doesn't involve you actually swinging harder. Whoa, how am I going to do that? Keep watching this video because I'm going to show you the exact drills and footwork patterns that will add more power and how to do it correctly. Now, here's the thing. We watch so many great players that are out there swing so fast, and guess what? It catches our eyes. Of course, what do we see? We see the racket moving so, so fast. So we think, I got to swing fast. But here's the thing. I challenge you. I challenge you to go out and start watching something else that will really help you probably a lot more to get more controlled power when you hit and that's their feet. So many times we're so caught up, we're not seeing what's really going on beneath the engine. Underneath the hood, there's this like savage engine that's just revving and you're like, whoa, what happened? Well, the same thing works with us. We have this savage engine, you have the savage engine, and it's your legs, it's your legs, not your arms. And so I'm gonna show you two footwork patterns that you'll see so many pros using, they use to produce more power even when they're on the run. And so what we first need to understand is this. How do we use our legs? How do we use our legs to generate more power, more speed on the ball? Well, basically, our legs are going to generate by pushing, pushing. So just think about this. If I want to jump straight up, what am I going to do? I'm going to load my legs to jump. Well, this same idea works when we're thinking about hitting any ground stroke and even our serves. We'll talk about that later. But any ground stroke. So what that means is when I'm moving out to the ball, most players, I see this, most players just step and they hit. Even if they're doing a great job using their body, they're rotating and they're getting good power. You can get a lot of power by having good rotation here and pulling the racket through. But the next level is something a little different. And what that means is when I step now with my outside leg, I'm going to start loading my outside leg. When you look at some of the biggest forehands of all time, I think of like Fernando Gonzalez, if you remember that guy. Fernando Gonzalez had a ginormous forehand. And upon studying it, what you notice how well he does is he loads his outside leg. And the more he loads here, he can now use that energy to push through the ball. And so there's two footwork patterns where you're going to see the use of this load and then the redirection of that load. So the use of the load to redirect it into the court. And I'm going to show you what these two footworks are and how you can start working on it at home. The first thing we need to understand though is that we always want to arrive to the ball on our outside leg. So me being a right-handed player, this means whenever I'm moving to get in position to a ball, if I can, unless the ball is like absolutely hit so hard that I'm just trying to get it back, I'm trying to arrive on my outside leg. And this does a couple things. By arriving on my outside leg, it allows me to store energy in my legs here, big muscles. Not only that, a lot of times when I arrive on my outside leg, if you use the rest of your body, I can store energy not only in my core because I'm twisting, so I have two sources here. Now, from here, this is the thing. Once I store, I need to start releasing energy, and depending on the situation, you have two means of doing it. There's more, but I'm going to show you two right now, which is if the ball's hit deep, I can load this leg and hit and push forward. So you see pros do this, like Nadal, like Djokovic, and even like Federer, when they're hitting a lot of times, you see this footwork movement where it's either subtle or very uh, aggressive. And what I mean by that subtle is you'll see players hitting here and they'll just gently load and then they'll hit and step. And you see this forward kind of stepping action. So the outside leg, hit and step. Outside leg, hit and step. You also see this when they're on the run and they're kind of trying to cut off a ball they're not quite there and they're going to load this leg and make it more drastic. You see it also on the return of serve a lot when players are sitting there and they load on this outside leg, lunge, hit, and step. Why are they doing this? It's because when they load, they want to redirect that force forward. Okay? Understand that. They're redirecting the force forward from the ground. And that energy gets transferred to the ball, creating more power, more penetration on your ball compared to just swinging by itself. Now, can you... Get a lot of power from just swing? Yes, but why not max out your potential and get it from the ground, also from your rotation and being relaxed? But a lot of it's gonna come from how you're using your legs. And not only that, it's gonna add stability. One other thing that I see a lot of recreational players messing up on is they tend to let balls play them, meaning the ball comes in and they're kind of falling over without their legs engaged. Yes, you do see players falling back, but a lot of times when you see players falling back on the Pro Tour, you see them loading this leg and as they're falling, they're actually transferring energy because they're constantly loading this leg. That's another reason why when you see players in person, they have huge legs because they want those big muscles to transfer that power forward. The next footwork pattern is this. It's what I call the switch, is they'll get in this position and they'll hit, and you'll see how 
they're constantly switching their body forward. Mainly, this leg that's loaded is being pushed forward, meaning transferring weight through the ball. You don't see that with a lot of recreational players. A lot of times I'll see a player sit here and they'll do this, okay? And what I'm looking for is that toe, is it going forward? Does it happen every time? No, but when they're being aggressive, when they're setting up, you'll see Nadal, he'll hit, and boom, what do you see? This leg pushing forward, because what is it doing? It's pushing the energy through the ball. So let's get down to some drills. The very first drill we're gonna do is just setting up and working on the timing. And this is probably one of the biggest things that I think whenever I've worked with recreational players with this footwork pattern, is the timing is the killer, because we're so used to kind of going step, step, hit especially if you're not used to shifting weight. It's even step, step, and their weight's on the front foot and hit. But what we wanna do for this particular footwork pattern, and because the ball's probably hit aggressively, this is a footwork pattern you're gonna use when the ball's hit aggressively at you, is to focus on loading, and we're gonna go basically step, hit, and then step. So step, I'm already stepped, I'm loaded, and what I'm gonna do is I'm also coiled as I'm loaded. This is really important, because you can be loaded, but you're not coiled. We wanna make sure as I step and turn, I'm coiled, meaning that my shoulders are facing this way and my hips are facing this way and now I'm coiling. And you feel it right in your hip bone, okay? And all I'm gonna do is now bounce the ball and swing so it looks like this. Now, if that is an issue with the timing, here's what I want you to do. It seems stupid, but this is how it breaks down. Start here with your hand back and all I want you to go is from here to here. It's like a dance almost. So just go here, 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 here. You're like, what is he having me do? This is how you break it down. You break it into small steps. Now I'm gonna go outside, here. Notice how I'm using my hand. Outside, here. So again, we went from here to here. Now we're going load here, here. Okay, load here. And then I'll grab my racket again, and all I'm gonna go is here, here. Okay, I've already stepped here, here. And then once you get comfortable with that, you can just toss the ball and go here, here. And it's key that as I load this outside leg, I'm pushing forward, I'm pushing into the court. I wanna get my body weight to impact the ball, not just my swing. Sometimes you can't get your body weight because you're fighting a ball that's pushing you back deep. But I wanna make sure that I'm getting my body weight into the ball. That's the very first. This next one will definitely involve more of your legs. So you'll feel a little bit more strain on your legs. So what I want you to do is load again here like I'm hitting and then twist around. And so what you're doing is really taking this back leg and pushing it forward. So you can just even start like this, go down and push up, up. So I'm pushing my leg up and forward and I'm twisting at the same time. Then what I can do is start loading, making sure that I'm twisting, okay, coiling, and do the exact same thing, okay? Exact same thing. You feel your body pushing. And then what we wanna do is start using our racket. I take it here, and I'm in a semi-open stance here, here, and going here, and here. Now, you're probably maybe saying, when would I use this? You would use this when you might be running out, running out raw, wide, and you get into this position, and you're doing this. Another nice thing about this position is because you're here, it can help you make contact earlier to hit the ball cross court. So if I'm stressed, I can run over and go here, here. Okay, so you can see how I got there and loaded and I switched my feet around. So again here, load, here. And you see my back foot pushing, coming around through the ball. Coming around, it also helps me get back in the position. So it's really important that you practice these, break them down into these small steps. I know sometimes it may seem silly to do some of these moves, but it really helps you if you're not familiar with this type of footwork movement. Now there's one more thing you have to be doing right, which is your take back, how you're taking your racket back. If you don't take it back the right way, it's gonna be an absolute killer for your forehand. So to make sure you're taking it back the right way, make sure you watch this video because it'll tell you this number one killer of taking your racket back that if you're doing it that, it'll sabotage everything else you just learned here.